Hello and welcome back to chapter 7. Today we're going to look at section 7.5 which deals with systems of inequalities. And if you recall, an inequality is going to be a symbol that looks like one of these. We have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. When we look at a solution of an, e an inequality, we're actually looking for an ordered pair that is true when both um, the a and b value of that ordered pair are plugged in for x and y. Now when we're graphing a system, um, or when we're graphing inequalities, it's, the graph is going to separate our plane into either two or more regions. So when we're looking at inequalities, within each region we're going to have one of the following. Either every single point within a given region is going to be a solution, or not a single point um, within a given region is going to be a solution. And I'll show you how to find those here in just a second. When we sketch the graph of an inequality that has two variables, in other words, we're looking at equations with both x and y, the first thing we want to do is we want to replace our inequality sign with an equal sign, and we want to sketch the graph of the equation. So it's, it's nothing new, it's nothing different than what you've been doing, it's just a standard equation. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change the line of our graph, and we're going to use a dashed line if it includes a less than or a greater than symbol, or we're going to leave a solid line for a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to symbol. Then we're going to pick a test point that falls within one of the regions. And then if we take that test point and we plug it into our system and it makes our inequality true or it satisfies it, then we're going to shade that region. If it makes our inequality false or does not satisfy the equation, then we're going to shade the opposite region. So here's just a quick um, picture of something or some similar representative type inequalities. This is y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 1. What we did here is we just graphed the equation y equals x squared minus 1. And then we went ahead and said because of this inequality being a greater than or equal to, our line is solid. And then if you pick a test point, let's say we're going to pick this point here at 0, 0, is 0 greater than or equal to 0 minus 1. And because it is, then that tells us that we're going to shade this region in here. If it was false, then we would have shaded this region out here. Likewise, just one thing I want to kind of reiterate is when we graph equations that say y is less than 3, Remember, these are just horizontal lines. Likewise, if we do x is greater than 3, those are going to be vertical lines. So the graph of y equals 3 looks like a horizontal line through 3. Because of the less than symbol, I'm going to make this a dashed line, as you see here. And I'm going to pick a test point. And you'll see I like the test point 0, 0 if I can. And if I plug that in, is 0 really less than 3? And because it is, then that tells me I'm going to shade this side of that. Now let's look at the, uh, the scenario where we have a system of inequalities. And this would mean more than one equation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch the graph for the system of inequalities. Or we're going to go through and graph each equation. Then we want to find a region that is common to every graph. In other words, when we shade, it's going to be the region that overlaps. And we're going to call this common area the solution set. And sometimes when we're trying to find that common area, it's useful to find the vertices. Now remember, the vertices are going to be the points of intersection between that kind of enclose the shaded region. And we're going to look at that here in a minute. So example two says to sketch the graph and label the vertices. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get y by itself in all of the equations. And that's going to give us, so these right here are really the equations that I'm going to be graphing. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to just put in my coordinate system. And I have the graph y equals 3. And it does include uh, the inequality with a, it's a less than or equal to, so this will be a solid line. And I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. So here's y equals 3. Then I have x equals a negative 2. And because of the inequality, it's really going to be a dashed line. 
and we'll do that in blue. So x equals negative 2. So I'm going to come over here and draw that in as a dashed line. And um, this equation up here should actually be x minus y is less than, I apologize, should be less than 2. So that's going to require another dashed line. And y equals x minus 2 is going to go down through negative 2. So we'll say negative 1, here's negative 2. Then it's going to go up through 1, 2. So now when I connect this, we're going to have something that looks like that. And now I have to find out where I'm going to shade. So it looks like I can use the point 0, 0 because this does not fall on any of the points. And if I plug 0 in here, I end up with 0 is less than 2, which is true. So I'm going to shade on this side of the green line. And then when I go to 0 is greater than negative 2, that is true. So that tells me I'm going to shade on this side here. And 0 is less than or equal to 3, which means I'm going to shade in this direction. So if you'll notice, your common overlapping region then is going to be in this triangular area right here. Now for our vertices, our vertices are going to be the points where our graphs intersect. Because we have an, a dashed line going through this point, and if you'll notice, they kind of come to a point right in here, this really will be an open intersection. This one here will also be an open intersection, just like this one will be here. And if you remember, open dots mean that we do not include those points because of the inequalities right here and here, which means that we don't include those points. And if you go ahead and calculate these out, you'll see that this point here occurs at 5, 3. This point here occurs at a negative 2 and 3. And this point here is a negative 2 and negative 4. Now just to kind of to touch base on what a vertex is and what a vertex is not, remember a vertex is only, a, uh, it's like a corner of a solution region. So this here is not a vertex because it does not touch the overlapping shaded region. This is a vertex, this is a vertex, this is a vertex, and this is a vertex because these are, they kind of, like think about it as they're kind of holding in um, the, the solution region. This one does not, so it's not considered a vertex. Example 3 says to sketch the graph and label the vertices of y is greater than 2x plus 3 and y is less than 2x minus 1. So both of these are going to include dashed lines. And if I go to 2x plus 3, that's going to give me 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to end up with something that looks like this, connected with dashed lines. And if I do 2x minus 1, I'm going to go through negative 1, which is right here. And we'll end up with something like this. Um, and now I have to pick a test point. Well, again, my test point is going to be 0, 0. And if I plug 0 into this equation here, 0 is greater than 3. That is not true, So, and that's going to be my blue line. So that means I'm going to shade the outside region then. And I personally, I like to use kind of like these dashed lines. Um, and then when I look at this equation right here, I end up with 0 is less than negative 1, which again is not true. So then I'm going to come out here and shade this region in here. So I see that my I don't have an overlapping region, which tells me that I have no solution. So this system has no solution because there's no overlapping region where the, um, where the shading overlaps. Example 4 says to sketch the graph and label the vertices. So in this case, I'm given y is greater than or equal to x squared. So when we go ahead and graph this, 
um, we end up with a point that hits at 0, 0. If I go 2 in the x, that's going to give me 4 in the y. Likewise, if I go negative 2, that will also give me 4. It is a solid line. So I'm going to end up with something that looks like this. And then I have y is greater than x plus 2. So that's going to give me an x or a y intercept at 2. And if I just plot a few points, this will be a dashed line that looks something like this. And now when I go to shade, for y is greater than or equal to x squared, if I pick the I can't pick 0, 0, so now I'm going to pick the point 0, 1. So again, I'm going to use a test point, 0, 1, and I'll put TP for test point. Um, so if I plug 0 in, is 0, or is 1 greater than or equal to 0 squared? And the answer is yes. So that tells me I'm going to want to shade the inside, or in this direction. And you, it's actually going to include everything above or on the inside of that parabola. Then for this equation here, I'm going to use that same test point. Um, and if I plug in 1 is greater than or equal to 0 plus 2, or is 1 really greater than or equal to 2? And the answer to that is no. So I'm not, my test point is right here. I'm not going to pick that same side, so my overlapping region then is going to be everything above that, and it's going to be inside of this parabola, above my red dashed line. Um, so, and maybe I should, so we're kind of looking at this region right in here as our overlapping region. And if we wanted to calculate the vertices points there, um, we can set the two graphs, or the two equations equal to one another. And you'll see that this point here is at 2, 4, and this point here is at negative 1 and 1. Another classic type of example that you'll see when we're dealing with systems of inequalities is what we call consumer sur surplus and producer surplus. Now, consumer surplus measures the amount that a consumer would have paid above what they actually did pay. So that would be like if you go to the store with $100, you found the pair of shoes that you really liked, um, let's say they were $80, now you would have been willing to pay $100, but you're pretty happy that they sold for only $80. Um, the producer surplus, on the other hand, is the amount that the producer would have been willing to take below the actual price. So maybe um, when you go to buy a car, um, let's say you're negotiating, the original price was $25,000, um, you agreed to pay 23,000, but the um, salesman really would have probably taken 20,000. So that's the amount that they would have been willing to take below the actual price. When we look at a supply and demand curve, you'll notice that the surplus is going to be a shaded region. So here's our demand curve, here's our supply curve, and you're going to have this equilibrium point, which is the price that was actually paid, and the producer surplus is going to occur down here. Meanwhile, the consumer surplus is going to be this shaded region up here. So for example 5, we're actually going to find the consumer and producer surplus for the supply and demand equations that are given. So we're going to want to go ahead and make a sketch of our graph. And if we graph this, you'll see that you end up with a graph that has a um, demand curve that go, starts at 81 and it's going to continue on down to somewhere just shy of 150. I'm sorry this isn't very straight and we're gonna start out, we'll graph the supply curve which is gonna start out at 0, 0 and this is going to continue on so that it looks something like this. And the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate this point right here, which is our equilibrium point. And we need to do that so that we can actually calculate where the um, where the, the selling price is that the consumer was willing to pay and the seller was willing to accept. 
before we can determine what they're going, what they would have paid or would have accepted. So your equilibrium point is going to be found by taking your two equations and setting them equal to one another. So when we do that, we end up with 81 is equal to 0.675x, or x is equal to 120 units. And if we go and we plug this in for one of them, you'll see that y is equal to $15. So the selling price was $15 at 120 units. So now for us to find the actual consumer surplus, so we'll say CS for consumer surplus, we actually want to go ahead and find out the area of that region. Well, the area of that region is, let's see, if we draw this in, consumer surplus, remember, is this area right here. Well, we essentially have the area of a triangle. And the area of that triangle is going to be found by taking one half times your height. Well, you have 81 minus your height of 15. And that gives you 66, by the way. So I'll just write 66 down below. And then you have your base of that triangle, which is this distance here, or 120. So when we multiply that all together, we end up with a price of $3,960. And if we want to look at the consumer, I'm sorry, the producer surplus, or the PS, we're going to use a similar type um, calculation, except for this, we're going to do 1 half times the base, which is still 120. But now we're looking at this height here, which is 15. And when we look at the surplus for the producer, we see that there was a dollar amount of $900. And with that, we will conclude section 7.5, and I will see you guys in class tomorrow. Have a good night.